What's going on everybody? Welcome back and today we're going to be unboxing this Renegade Battery Wicked Start to put in my Polaris Sportsman 570. Alright guys, so if you remember when I was at Tar Hollow the other day, or it was about two weeks ago now, my battery went dead. So in the Polaris Sportsman 570, it comes with one of those older style batteries that has uh, water cells that you have to actually keep the water filled up. The battery is about four years old. It was the original battery from 2019. So what I've done is that I'm upgrading to a Renegade battery Wicked Start. It has what they say is going to be 400 plus cold cranking amps. I believe that the stock battery has about 190. So for those that have problems like me, where you have that issue with the compression stroke and sometimes it doesn't start and you got to turn it off and try it again, this is supposed to significantly improve that issue because it's supposed to give it a lot more power. So even though it's the standard 12 volt, 14 amp, it does have 400 plus cold cranking amps, which is when you're actually putting load on it to start it. So there's a fully sealed AGM battery. So as we open this, let's see what's inside. Basically, from my understanding, this is more of a generic battery that fits multiple ATVs. So we're gonna compare the size of the stock one to make sure that it fits properly so anybody can go out and buy this. And then we're also gonna start it up, see if we can tell if it makes any difference right now. I'm probably gonna to have to use it for a while to actually see. So it looks like they gave me a uh, koozie, which is pretty nice. Throw a beer in here or soda, whatever you wanna throw in. Uh, Renegade battery, no rules, no limits. And then you can see it actually does come in a box. I didn't think it was gonna come in a box within a box. I thought it was just gonna be the battery, but this is the RG14AHWS, 12 volt, 14 amp. Uh, and it is their Wicked Start model, which is that more powerful battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out of there and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so now this box is out of the other box. So let's open it up and see what comes with it, if anything. All right, so on the top we have a, here's some simple do's and don'ts. So this battery is supposed to be charged every 30 days, but they're saying just don't leave it on the tender all the time. That's actually bad, a battery tender, don't leave it on all the time. So just top it off after every 30 days, you know, store it at a specific temperature, make sure it's clean, you know, basic stuff. Um, but I do like that they say don't bring it and kind of just leave it on the tender after every ride. And they say don't leave it on the tender for more than 48 hours, that's too much. So this is a less hassle battery. Again, it's an AGM, um, so it looks like they give you the screws that you need that go on the top here. Um, they also have ones on the side, I believe. I'll pull it out and show you. All right, so they have the screw terminals that go on the top or on the side. This is the negative. Here's your positive. All right, so it's an AGM battery, so it's sealed, so you don't have the things on the top to put water in. Uh, you know, it has the Wicked Start on the front with the model number and everything. But other than that, it's just a pretty standard battery, nothing crazy. We get a manual. So really basic information. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna actually install this. So what we need to do is that the Polaris Sportsman 570, this is a 2019. The new models, they move the battery, but the battery is in here. It's like one of the worst, worst spots possible. It's behind everything in the front where it gets extremely dirty and muddy. So it's held on by a rubber strap, which we're gonna take off here. And then there's just the two screws that hold in the positive and negative terminals. And then we need to kind of uh, sneak that battery through here. So I'm gonna get the camera set up to see it a little bit better. And then we will take that battery out. Looks like I'm gonna get a little bit dirty because I haven't really cleaned that area after the last ride. All right, so if you've never taken the battery out, it makes it pretty simple because you just have this clip. So you pull this down, you pull it right off the clip. And now here's your small little bungee cord that actually holds the battery down. And that's really the only thing holding it down. So this plastic piece comes right off the top. So just kind of keep the top clean. And then we're gonna have our terminals, which we're gonna use a small wrench to take off. So because of the tight spot, my arm might be getting in the way of the video. So we'll see how this comes out. I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter on this. I don't know if it's actually 10 millimeter, if it's a uh, standard size or what, but this works. Let's see how it goes. Getting to the negative terminal is actually much harder than the positive. What I do is that now that I'm loosened, I'm just gonna use this in my hand. And screw it completely even though I shouldn't need the bolt that's on here 
I'm going to try and not drop it and lose it. That just came out. Pull that off. And now we'll do the same for the negative side. All right, guys, now with the positive and negative disconnected, we're just going to sneak this out. Now, there is a little hose right here that you can pull off. That hose is for any kind of overflow of the water. So since we don't need that, I, I filled this up with water when I was in Tar Hollow. So this might be a little bit messy as far as water goes. But we're going to pull this out, and then we're going to compare the size. I might have to move this camera because it's a little bit of a tough And the battery's out. All right, I got a couple other projects going on on the bench right now. So we're gonna take a look at this real quick and just do some rough numbers. So you can see that for the most part, these batteries visually look about the same size. So you can see that the positive, positive, negative, negative, we can do it on the same side, it's no problem. The height of the new battery is actually a little bit lower, which is nice. So you get a more powerful battery and it's actually not higher. And you're getting just about the same width and height, or width and length. So if we look at this real quick, you can see that this is roughly, this is just a rough number around 14. With the overflow, it's really 13 without that overflow. And this one is roughly 13. So they're about the same size there. If we take a look at this and we do a rough number here, we can see that this is roughly eight and a half and rough number here is gonna be the same eight and a half. So these batteries are almost identical in size. The OEM battery is just taller. So this thing should fit in perfectly. It's gonna be absolutely no problem. So we're gonna get that put in right now. So this might be a terrible view, but it's probably the best view I can get of trying to install this battery. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna slip this in over this hose right here. Oh, this battery's pretty heavy. Slip that right into the mounting plate. And we're in. So now all we need to do is screw down the terminals. Positive is on. The negative was the harder one, but the good thing is that with this new battery, you can actually get to the negative a lot better. And now I'm just gonna give it a little tightening down. We don't want those coming loose. So just in case that was a really bad install angle, you can see there that the battery is in. And you can see that the positive and negative are attached. Battery got a little bit dirty from a dirty quad, but <laughs> other than that, looking good. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna put the plastic piece back on top. Bungee cord is back on. Nice and tight, keeping everything down and in place. We should be good, let's see if this, uh, Starts up. All right, moment of truth, here we go. Oh yeah, that actually did sound a lot better as far as starting. So let's see what it says for voltage on here. Volts 14.3, 14.4. That looks good. I'm gonna take it for a quick spin. All right, quick spin, just to make sure the battery was good and stayed constant. The startup, definitely, you could tell it had more power versus the old battery. Granted, my old battery was four years old. 
So it was at its last leg. As you know, it failed when I was in Tar Hollow. So this is the new replacement. It fits perfectly and it seems pretty good. So I'll do one more startup for you and I'll leave you with that. All right, second startup, I'll leave you here. Sounds great.